Yeah, hello, welcome to my new tutorial. This is Web Studio Richter. Finally, after kind of a long Christmas break, I managed to make a new tutorial. And today our topic is kind of interesting. It's about CSS viewport units. So like the viewport is like the area what you can see here on your screen or on your tablet. And it's like in this case exactly this height and this width. Or in the JSBin is of course just this co output container. <laughs> so here the viewport is now in the width 867 pixels. And we can just increase it to 1000 pixels. Or 999, it's as well fine. So if we are using this, it's like perfect for responsive web design. And the viewport units are as well much more useful than just the percentages because percentages are relative to their ancestor container. So if you are having a container of 500 pixels here, a div, and you're making inside it another div, then the, um, then the percentage of the second inside div is like relative to this first one ID container and not anymore to the whole viewport. So Viewport units are really useful to make responsive web pages and like to make all the um, elements on the web page re be responsive to the whole viewport. Let's start with a small example, um, like typography. So we are making here like some small tags and some hello in it to get you a better understanding of how these viewports are working. Hello. Okay. So, one, we are having two units, like um, what we are talking about now. There are two uh, other ones, but um, today these are just in our topic. So we're having viewport width and the, uh, the viewport height. So they are used like px for pixels or the percentage sign in the CSS syntax. Mm. And one of this viewport height and viewport width unit is equivalent to 1% of the viewport height or viewport height um, width, depending on what you are using. So 1%. So if you're having like here now, we're having almost 1000 pixel in width, 1% would be 10 pixels. So let's try it out. We are making the p tag and the span tag. And we are giving the p tag like a usual size of 10 pixels. So this is what we know. And the span we are giving now a font size of one viewport width. And you see what's happening. This is as well the same size as this because one viewport width is 1% of the width of this viewport which is 1000 pixels as you can see up there. and this is exactly like 10%. But what is the difference now here is like it's changing as well if the viewport is changing. So this is really useful for any responsive web design. Um, let's have a look now. Okay, 1001 pixel. Um, for a more um, for a better example like um, with which is a typical problem we see in responsive web design we are having four containers and these four containers we want to position like two in one row and if we are changing the size like we want to mm, equivalently change um, the size of the boxes so that they are staying like two in one row so I will show you um, in a second Let's begin this by deleting this text here. Okay. And giving the HTML and the body tags the basic style of margin zero. Because we don't, we cannot use it all like that if there is some padding in margin. And we are giving the width 100 viewport width units which is 100 
percent of the whole viewport width and the height as well 100 viewport height so this is like this size here so okay i will make i will prepare just uh, um, basic styles for the diff containers and we'll stop pause this video for the second okay welcome back so we're having now these four containers here and their attributes height and width so usually we would make something like 100 pixels for this height and 100 pixels for the width and give it like a background color of red so it's the same we can make here 100 pixels and a background color of let's say green so then they are now slowly appearing 100 pixels 100 pixels and here we give it a color of blue and the last one 100 pixels 100 pixels the background color of yellow so perfect now we're having a classic design like four diff containers with each 100 pixels width and 100 pixels height and the background colors are set so we are changing here this width and height of course nothing is changing here in the design because it's fixed so now we want to make them like in a row we are using like here for it um, the float attribute if you're not familiar with that I advise you my videos about this topic or better it's like a text um, to get familiar with this because it's very important float left for everybody left okay so now we have it all in a row but what is happening it's still fixed and if it's like the viewport is smaller the floating of course is as well breaking because they are not fitting anymore in the row so this is not what we want we want to have something like this so like two boxes in two rows and independently how big the viewport is so and here viewport units are coming into context so we are changing here these pixels units to viewport units and what do we need if we want to have it like this and one viewport width is like one percent of the viewports width we need to make it like 50 percent viewport width each of it and like 50 percent viewport height as well so let's fill it out this would look like this 50 percent viewport height 50% viewport width. So you see the first container is already fitting to it and if we are changing the width it is changing as well. So we make it for the others as well. Viewport width. 50% <coughs> viewport height. 50% viewport width. And the last one and you see already what is happening. It's exactly what we desired. Viewport height, viewport width. So we're having now all these boxes, like in two boxes in one row, and we're having two rows. So it's perfectly fitting now, and as you can see, it's not depending on the size of the viewport, not the height as well, as you can see here. Yeah. It's already always fitting so you're like telling it make this design two boxes in two rows independently what the viewport sizes are and this is really useful for any kind of web design as you can imagine and again the difference the main difference to percentages you could make here now in this example as well percentage because the div boxes are like relative to the body element which is always then kind of 100% in the whole viewport but in the second when you are making like a 
another div into this div, the percentage is relative to this div then. So to this div box and not anymore to the body, which is giving you kind of the width of the viewport. So you are really independent where you are using viewports. It's always relative to the viewport width or the viewport height. So, and let's have a look now on the can I use database, viewport units. Mm. And here you see that there are two more viewport units. This is like the vmin is like the use always the smallest viewport size. So, um, s at a tablet, for example, you can make it horizontal and vertically, and um, this will always take the smallest um, uh, viewport. And here you have the opposite, the, um, the biggest viewport. So if it is the height or the, um, the width, is depending how you are holding your device. Um, so, let's have a look now on browser support. You see like in all the modern like Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Opera and the Android browsers from the newest generations, um, it's already supported. So you're having some kind of issues mm, in Internet Explorer still and um, here in Opera Mini. Okay, this is not so important because it's not so widespread, though it's a nice browser. Um, but you see like it is coming. Yeah, this is really like a future attribute you could keep in mind and you could already use. And um, anyway, I, I am using it already and you're having some kind of fallback for all the browsers. This you can still do. Um, so it's really to advise to use it and I hope you learned something today. Um, I'm looking forward for your comments and uh, yeah, goodbye. Till the next tutorial.